Hello, I'm Amara Jones at this year's Bioneers Conference, reporting for FSTV's special coverage of the Bioneers Conference, its annual gathering of people from all around the world on what the environment can teach us about living as better people in sync with nature in a way that will allow the planet to thrive rather than to not thrive. And so <laughs> um, in order for us to have this conversation, it makes total and utter sense, and indeed one might say it's necessary necessary for us to talk to the co-founder of Bioneers, Nina Simons, who is the co-founder of Bioneers. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Omar. It's great to be here. And for having us. Um, we know that it is always a busy and an emotional time, so the fact that you're able to take the time to talk with us is always great. We're thrilled to have your partnership. Thank you. In getting the word out. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so this is the 30th anniversary, the 30th time you've done this. Yeah. Um, does <laughs> it get easier? Does it get easier in some ways, mm -hmm. but it's always different, which is why I think if someone had said to me 30 years ago, you might be doing this in another 30 years, I would have said no way. But, uh, but the fact that it is constantly evolving to really meet the, the call of these times um, and never the same twice, you know, in a way it's easier. Um, and in other ways, I'm mostly really grateful we've had so many years to learn how to do it well, because I think Bioneers has never been more needed than it is right now. 100%. Yeah. So this year's theme is seeding the fields, creating transformative solutions. Mm -hmm. But um, before we go into that um, and explore what that looks like now and in the future, since it is the 30th um, anniversary, and as you just said, um, if someone told you 30 years ago, you'll be doing this 30 years hence. <laughs> Looking back, um, what were the original goals of the conference? And do you believe that those have been achieved or how have they changed? Mm, it's a great question. Um, I think what initially motivated us to start the conference mm -hmm. was a combination of James Henson um, first sounding the alarm about climate change mm -hmm. in 1989. And so it was partly a response to that, and partly it was the growing awareness that there were solutions and strategies and projects on the ground that were seeding uh, the vision for a way to live on Earth that doesn't mortgage our future and that can actually create harmony within ourselves, with each other, and with the natural world. Um, so in that way, that has remained fairly constant. I mean, I remember sitting at our first Bioneers conference in 1990, and I had this experience of feeling like a five-year-old, like my jaw was hanging open, and I was just, all I could think of was, the world has to know about these people. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I was kind of awestruck because they were so inspiring to me. Um, not only in their ingenuity, but in their heartfulness, in their quality of spirit and, and understanding of the sacred, and in the ways that all of them, almost regardless of what discipline they came from, um, their work grew out of a real alliance and respect for the natural world. Right. And, uh, and even though I came from an arts background, I just remember feeling like, oh, there's so much I have to learn from these people. And, and recognizing that the mainstream media wasn't covering this. Mm -hmm. It was only covering the bad news. And as time has gone on, <laughs> there are ways in which, especially over the last five years, I'd say, I've had to question for myself because we weren't able to move the needle as much in terms of climate change as we'd hoped, I wondered, did we fail? Mm. Um, and ultimately what I've come to believe is that, uh, no, I think that we've ignited and encouraged leaders of all colors and ages and disciplines. I think that we have strengthened a movement of movements and I think that we at the beginning, we were idealistic, and I think we underestimated just how dug in and deep 
the orientation towards greed and plunder was going to be. I think we imagined that even the heads of the oil and gas and coal companies were going to come around in time to save the planet. And of course they haven't. Um, so, you know, so it was perhaps our optimism or our idealism that, that overshot. Um, but I also remember how in the early days we started working on uh, creating curriculum and getting into schools. And we went to some education conferences. And I remember being shocked because we were a little tiny startup nonprofit with no money. So we were really scrappy and raw. And we get to these conferences and there'd be these huge glossy displays that basically were funded by the oil and gas companies that 30 years ago started um, seeding climate denial and were very effective and were handing out free curriculum to educators everywhere. And um, so there's that too, you know, I think, I think that the vantage point of 30 years has helped me understand that we're not going to win or lose this in one lifetime, that actually it's an effort that's much bigger than any of us. And, and I feel like I have a new and deeper understanding of the civil rights movement and the women's movements and all the movements that have actually taken generations and sometimes centuries to unfold. Mm. Yeah. So you realize that you're um, sort of one post along the road. Well, and we're a contributor to a giant evolutionary process. Right. You know? Um, right. But this is the first year that we have actually sold out the main theater all three days. Wow. And, and um, that's super exciting. And it's evidence to us that really Bioneers is more needed now than it's ever been. And that it's not only about lifting up the voices and visions and projects of people whose work is really about reinventing human civilization, um, but also about connecting the dots among all these disparate social movements and efforts that because of the nature of our culture that tends to pigeonhole everybody's work and the divide and conquer strategy that has actually kept a full on unified people's movement from being as powerful as it needs to be. You know, I think that's part of what Bioneers has really taught us over the years is the power of connecting um, people and ideas and movements and cross pollinating across the divides. And I think that's still one of the things that Bioneers really uniquely does. Yeah, it's one of the things that you mentioned is about the role of the resistance of the oil and gas movement. And what's interesting is in part um, there was operating from as everyone was, you all in starting this, with a lack of knowledge, in some way ignorance. And what I mean by sure. that, what I mean by that is that we now know that the first climate change memo that went to a president went to President Johnson. Yeah. You all were 20 years behind and didn't even yeah. know it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, and it's, it was like yes. we're at the beginning, but yeah. you're actually a generation into a, a cover-up. Well, right? it's, a gi it's been a giant corporate takeover, you That's know, right. and it's, it's this combination, I believe, of capitalism and patriarchy and globalization that together is really sounding a death knell on the planet. That's right. And frankly, you know, I am so, so grateful for the leadership of uh, young people and indigenous people, especially all over the world, and women who I think together are all sort of shedding uh, the, the self-limiting concepts of having grown up in this culture that has taught us to keep ourselves small at a time when the earth is ringing off the hook. Right, and it says something, it, it, I mean, at this point that you have been doing something right, right? The fact that not only the sellout, but the fact that the younger you go, the more people believe and see and are in accord yeah. with what the values are of this, this conference. It means that, yeah. you know, it's the long tail. Well, I think that's true. It's also, I mean, I'm really honored by both the fact that our youth program keeps growing. We have five to 600 youth here each year, and they're the most diverse constituency in the conference, and that the Indigenous Forum keeps growing every year. And frankly, 
from everything I've learned from 30 years of learning from indigenous folks, um, in general, they don't suffer fools. And, you know, we've had to be really meticulous, not that we haven't made mistakes, but to walk our talk and be really um, honoring of mm -hmm. all of their sovereignty. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the indigenous women that lead that program are just extraordinary and mm -hmm. doing an amazing job. Mm -hmm. So it's an honor to serve that community too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So speaking of the future, this large youth program, we've spoken about schools. Um, moving forward in your 30th year, why did you choose the theme this year of seeding the field, creating transformative solutions? Well, <clears throat> because we are living through a time of being between worlds. There's so much dying, right? I mean, part of what I've been feeling is how I believe we're all impacted by the rate of extinctions that are going on. And that frankly, whatever kind of body we're in, and what it, whether we're human or non-human, I sort of think everything alive on Earth today can sense that loss. And that because we're all products of a culture that doesn't really give us a space to express either grief or outrage, both of which are the appropriate responses to loss, everybody's kind of in this spell of distraction and confusion and, you know, needing compass points and needing community and isolation. And so seeding the future, you know, was an obvious choice because really, I think our power goes where our attention goes. And because the mainstream media is all about death and bad news and violence, um, it's easy to sort of get mesmerized by that. And if we put our attention into the world that's being born, which is what Bioneers is all about. I mean, what I love about Bioneers and really why I've given half my life to it mm -hmm. is because it makes visible and palpable the world that we're all bringing in, midwifing into form. And that's a very powerful thing to do, while at the same time convening people to experience community in their bodies, you know, and a, and a true multicultural and multi-generational field that honors everyone's sovereignty, um, while at the same time being together around common cause. And we all need that so much right now. So I think it's the medicine we felt was really called for in this time. And are you despairing or are you hopeful or are you, is the dichotomy <laughs> a false one? I would choose for the latter. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think they are two sides of the same coin, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. as Joanna Macy said, if we allow ourselves to feel the grief and the loss, then we can come out fearless and strong and clear to act on behalf of what we love. Mm -hmm. And I actually feel like, you know, having recently experienced the death of my own mother, mm -hmm. um, it's making me value moments of joy and celebration and beauty even more, you know? So I think it's a false binary. Right. And Which has gotten we us need it all. The, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one last question. Personally, yeah. as a person, having attended every conference for 30 years, <laughs> out of necessity of nothing else, <laughs> right? Because you ran it, so you have to be here. Um, what is the one thing that you've learned from your experience here that has been the most revolutionary or impactful on your life? Whew. Only one thing, huh? Or the one thing that stands <laughs> out. I, I would imagine that if you ask the question at different times, you get different answers. So I guess to, today, what is the answer? Knowing that it could be very well different tomorrow. Okay, I may have to give you a little bit of a multifaceted answer. Sure. Um, I would have to say, to, I feel like what I've learned is to honor and celebrate the wholeness of our human capacities, mm. um, which includes valuing emotion mm -hmm. and intuition mm -hmm. and hunches and dreams and, mm. and connection. Um, and to decolonize our minds and hearts so that we can respond in a truly present, aware, and resourced way to the challenges that we were born to face. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Um, 
And understanding those things instinctively, instinctually, it's interesting because in Native traditions, those are considered to be forms of information. Right. Right. They're of not, course. you know, they are yeah. actually forms of information. And so. And they're um, not sidelined or diminished exactly because of right. their association with a quote feminine. That's right. Right. So that's a right. lot of that has to do with you know, how we recover right. from a patriarchal culture. That's right, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I think for me, this is my third Bioneers, mm. and for me, the thing that I have learned that I can now see clearly, I guess is the way that I would mm. say it, is that um, when I see the, the inhumanity in our society, the way in which we treat people as d disposable, <sighs> yeah. it makes total sense to me now because that's the way we treat the land. Yeah. And there's no way that we can treat ourselves better than we treat where we live. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're shifting from a culture that has a primary value on things mm -hmm. to a primary value on relationship. That's right. And we've got to heal inside ourselves before we can heal among ourselves, before we can, not before, but all at the same time. They're all octaves of the same societal disease. That's right. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, thank you so much for devoting half your life. <laughs> it's been my honor and joy, really. So yeah. now, they'll, after another 30 years, you'll say nearly my entire <laughs> life. That's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> May it not be so. <laughs> it's great to be with you, Amara. Great to see you. Have yeah. a wonderful conference. I I'm will. looking forward to three sellout days of being <laughs> in the hall. I know it's going to be wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. And stay tuned more from Bioneers with FSTV's special productions and special coverage of this really pivotal and unique conference. Thank you so much.